This episode was brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Join over 10,000 professionals from 90 countries to learn security online. Also brought to you by Hacker Arsenal, artillery for cyber warriors. Visit us on hackerarsenal.com to check out our latest attack defense gadgets. Welcome to our new show, InfoLoop, where we bring you the latest in cybersecurity research. Today, we are going to talk about Bad Rabbit Ransomware. Starting with the basics, ransomware is a malicious piece of code which blocks access to a digital or digitally controlled resource. These resources can be digital files or computer-controlled systems. After completely locking the victim out, it asks for a ransom via some mode of payment. The most commonly used method of payment is anonymous digital currency like Bitcoin. The ransomware claims to restore the access once the payment is made. However, even after making the payment, the victim is on the mercy of the hackers, who may not keep their promise even after getting paid. The most common type of ransomware is crypto ransomware. Crypto ransomware encrypts users' files and asks for a ransom in exchange for the decryption password. Researchers at Kaspersky Labs detected such a threat on October 24, 2017, which mainly infected users in Russia, but they also noticed some cases in Turkey, Ukraine, and Germany. They decided to call this ransomware Bad Rabbit. Bad Rabbit is a crypto ransomware. It is created mainly to target corporate networks. It's interesting to note that instead of using any exploit, it infects the first target using drive-by download. This downloaded file is masqueraded as Adobe Flash installer, which needs to be executed with administrator privilege by the potential victim. After infecting the first machine, it uses Eternal Romance exploit to compromise other machines on the network. It also tries commonly used credentials, which are hard-coded to spread. On infected machine, it generates a random 16-bit key and then uses AES-128-CBC to encrypt the files. After encrypting the files, it encrypts the symmetric AES key with the hacker's 2048-bit RSA public key along with other system-related information. This encrypted string, termed as personal installation key, is then written as a message into a modified bootloader. After doing all this, Bad Rabbit reboots the system, which then boots using the modified bootloader. It then directs the victim to visit a website hosted on Tor Network. The victim is supposed to pay the ransom and send the personal installation key to the hackers. The hackers will then decrypt the string and send the AES decryption key, termed as password, to the victim. The victim can enter into the system by providing this key during boot and then decrypt the files using de decrypt app present on the desktop. Researchers at Kaspersky also discovered that recovery is possible by recovering the shadow copies from the disk or decryption key from the memory, both of which are not deleted by the ransomware. Apart from this, there is no way to recover the files without paying the ransom. The link to the blog post on Kaspersky's website will be available in the description box below. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time on another episode of InfoLoop. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook so you don't miss out on any of the latest cybersecurity news. This episode was brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Join over 10,000 professionals from 90 countries to learn security online. Also brought to you by Hacker Arsenal, artillery for cyber warriors. Visit us on hackerarsenal.com to check out our latest attack defense gadgets. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.